Hi, this is Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax. And today we're going to cover the third part of a three part series on creating a gift by producing a lithophane, a three dimensional carving that is lit behind to create a slide like black and white image. In part one, we learned how to take a photograph and convert it to a lithophane, and then how to use Fusion 360 to design the 3D printed components. In part two, we went into the wood chop and we learned how to use a router and a compound miter saw to produce the base of this gift. And now in part three, we're going to assemble it all together into the final product. Okay, stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now for the exciting part. I have all of the pieces manufactured, fabricated, produced for my father's 90th birthday celebration trophy. Let's go through the parts one by one and talk for just a moment about how they were produced. The 90 that's going to go on the top is 3D printed. It's 3D printed using a wonderful filament. I'm going to grab it here. That's right behind me. This filament uh, I purchased on Amazon. It's from CC3D China. It's PLA Silky Shiny Gold. And it's a gold filament that really does look like gold. It doesn't look like yellow. So that was printed on the Prusa i3, original Prusa i3 MK3 printer. I have the lithophane that was also printed on the Prusa printer in um, white PLA. I have the base that was printed in PETG and I use PETG primarily because um, my roll of black PLA was being used to print the cover, which was printed on the Ender 5. I have my LED light bulb uh, that is USB powered and has a switch that I bought for a few dollars on Amazon. And I have the two pieces of the base. Then in order to help with the assembly, I have CA glue and activator. Now CA glue is just super glue except that the CA glue that you buy from woodworking manufacturers, uh, pen making manufacturers, online for people that are doing more serious work is different than the CA glue you get at your local drugstore. Um, I believe the difference is it's less diluted. Um, it is more expensive. In particular, this CA glue is the stick fast CA adhesive medium. That means it's a little thicker, it dries slower, but if I want to make it dry instantly, I can spray it with a bit of this activator. I have a couple deck screws that I'm going to use to assemble the top to the bottom. I have blue painter's tape, which I love to use to hold things in place while I'm assembling them. I have double stick tape that I'm going to use for the same purpose. I have my 15 or maybe 20 year old Black and Decker hot glue gun. And I think we are ready to get started. Okay, so first step of this assembly, we need to take the top part of the base. The base is two pieces of oak. I need to align it on the back edge, and then I'm going to screw it into the second part. So I need to center that, so that's about 14 millimeters on each side. Let's see how close I got. It's pretty darn close. I have two deck screws here. I pre-drilled and countersunk the holes um, in, a, in my workshop so I wouldn't get any dust here. To countersink a hole just means to, we'll let you take a look at that here, it just means that you make the top part of the hole wide enough for the screw head so that it looks a little nicer when it's in place. I need to remeasure this. A little bit more. Now, even though this is going to be inside, I did countersink it just to uh, 
give it a little nice or finish. I'm going to use a very inexpensive Black and Decker drill driver. Now I do have a power drill, but I find for putting screws in, I have better control with this inexpensive electric screwdriver. We're going to put a little more torque on there. Whoops. Okay, let's get the other one started. And then drop the screwdriver. Let's grab that. Okay, let's get the other one started. I'm standing up so I can put a little more torque on this, a little more pressure on this. I am screwing into oak. Oak is really tough. There we go. Maybe I did need to use the... Okay, I might want to tighten those down a little bit with the heavier duty screwdriver. Let me go get that and come right back. Okay, I brought in the big guy. Um, this is an 18 volt electric drill, and this should allow us to make this a more permanent attachment. Okay, now the ratcheting you heard is because on a drill, there's an adjustment um, when you're in screwdriver mode. And the higher the number you turn it to, the more pressure it will put on the screw before it stops. The lower the number, the less pressure before it stops. That'll keep you from overdriving the screw. So I generally start a little lower. Oops. And then I crank it up a little bit. Okay, that seems good. Okay, we're all done with that. And now we have a base that consists of two parts and it has a convenient hole for our light. Okay, we're going to assemble the light. And now we're ready to start putting our unit together. Let's take and center this first. And I'm going to just put it together by hand, just to make sure everything more or less fits. And while doing that, I'm going to use a little bit of this blue painter's tape to keep things in place. The advantage of producing these parts using CAD was that, uh, and then 3D printing them, is I can be very sure that the measurements um, fit because uh, they were all produced in the same CAD environment and were produced in as basically one assembly and then taken apart for printing. Here we go. And we're going to put the 90 on top. Okay, so we are ready to start gluing this down. Okay, now that we have the lithophane attached to the base and the body, um, I did notice it's a little bit loose on the left hand side. So I'm going to put just a drop more super glue that will let dry while we're working on this. So I'll put a drop of super glue on here. One other thing I did notice is I used a bit of the accelerant to speed the, uh, the glue drying time on the inside. It did discolor the black PLA a little bit. So you'll need to be careful about this uh, uh, CA activator um, because it may discolor your CA, your PLA. Okay, so we're going to put this on here 
and let's uh Seems to be all right. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to take a quick look look from the front to see how this looks. And now I'm going to come back in a minute. I'm going to turn most of the lights down so I can show you how this looks lit up. Be right back. Okay, this completes our build today. And I want to thank you for joining me on Dr. Vax. I want to encourage you to remember that just because you own a 3D printer, I have two of them behind me, doesn't mean you have to 3D print everything, combining wood and a bit of uh, electronic components. And 3D printing allows you to produce remarkable things. If you enjoyed this segment and the three-part series, the first part on how to use various CAD programs to design a trophy for my father's 90th birthday party, which is coming up in two days. Um, and the second part on the actual machining of the wood, the wood manufacturing and some of the 3D printing. And this third part, where we took a look at how to assemble it all together. Please subscribe to this channel, click like below. You can find additional material um, and reference material on the drvax.com website. Thanks so much. Have a good day.